Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShark.com and ElectronicLessons.com. Today I'm going to show you how to build my uh, uh, four-channel latching and momentary relay set. So how it works is here's the wireless receiver, the relays, the relay outputs, the relay driver circuitry, and the microprocessor. And of course here's your input power supply. The kit comes with all the parts relative to the to here. Uh, a receiver, which plugs in right here, and a transmitter, four button transmitter. So, what we're going to do is we're going to turn this into this. I'm quite happy with how the board turned out. And using uh, this onboard jumper, you can choose between having a momentary output, meaning you hold the button down, the course while the relay goes high until you let go of the button, or latching mode where you press a button and the output latches high, the relay alert latches high, you press it again and it toggles low, and so on and so on. So first of all, I'm going to open this bag up and we're going to have a look at the components and we're going to put it, put the kit together piece by piece. The transmitter is off screen. The transmitter comes with the kit too and it has four buttons and an extendable antenna for better range. Uh, comes with a custom PCB, four, or sorry, five red three millimeter lady emitting diodes, four diodes, four five volt relays, a uh, jumper wire which we'll use later, four, five 470 ohm resistors, four 10k ohm resistors, um, four 100k ohm resistors, a receiver, four channel receiver, a uh, program microcontroller, five volt regulator 7805, a single um, 0 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitor, 3-pin header, 2-pin header connector, a 100 microfarad electrolytic capacitor, a DIP18 socket, 1 2-pin terminal block, and 4 3-pin terminal blocks for the relay outputs. Um, so, first of all, let's talk about our resistors. We'll be soldering our resistors in. The They are all, all uh, labeled on the board. Um, for instance, and they're all labeled with a value. So, in the case of R9, 470 ohm resistor, R11, 470 R, uh, R10, 470 R, R12, 470 R, 470 ohm, and R13 right here is 470 R for 470 ohms. And those are for current limiting to our five LEDs. Now, below that, there's a row of 10k ohm resistors. R1, 10K, R2, 10K, R3, 10K, and R4, 10K. It's all labeled on the board. Lastly, R5, 100K, R6, 100K, R8, 100K, and R7, 100K. So make sure that if you if uh, make sure that you place the right values in the right areas. Resistors are not polarized, so it doesn't matter which way you put them in as long as you're putting the right values in the right places. But it is labeled on the board, so it shouldn't be at all difficult to do so. Next, we will do our uh, capacitors. And our, di and our, our diodes and our LEDs. The LEDs each have a long lead and a short lead. There's five LED footprints on the board here, 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 and here. Now, what you want to do is the short lead always faces the footprint label. In this, in this case, it's LED 1, LED 2, LED 3, LED 4, and VT. So, for the top four LEDs, the indicators, the LED, LED indicators, are on the left. So you want to place your short leads on the left and your positive leads on the right. So your short leads on the left, long leads on the right. Short lead on the left, long lead on the right. Short lead, long lead. Short lead, long lead. In the case of VT, the indicator is on the right. So you want to place your, your short lead on the right and your positive lead on the left. If you uh, reverse those, it won't be a huge deal, the relays will still activate, but you, the LEDs will not light up. Very, very important to take into consideration. Now the diodes, there's four of them, labeled di D1, D2, D3, D4. There's uh, On the diodes, there is a white stripe on one side and black on the other. On the footprints, there's a white stripe on the right side in each case. Make sure that from a bird's eye view that the white stripe on the diode is facing the stripe on the footprint. So. Uh, white stripe on the right, on the right, on the right, on the right, and your black side on the left, on the left, on the left, on the left. If you reverse those and that re relay turns on, then it's going to cause a direct short to ground, and the circuit will essentially reset. 
So, next, the uh, two capacitors. The 0 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitor goes in the C1 slot right here, labeled C10.1U for 0 0.1 uh, microfarad. It's not electrolytic, it's not polarized, it can go in either way. Uh, the electrolytic, however, which goes in the C2 slot, labeled C2100U for 100 micro, has a positive lead and a short lead. The positive lead goes in the bottom hole, and the short lead goes in the top hole. Now there's a little tiny positive symbol, a little plus sign on the bottom lead, indicating that that's the positive hole, the, the bottom hole. So then place your long lead on the bottom of the C2 footprint, and your short lead on the top. Solder those all into place. Be very careful not to short anything. Next we will do the terminal blocks. The terminal blocks are easy, but you have to make sure that you place them in the right way. Each terminal block has a terminal side and a plastic side. Make sure that in every single case, the terminals are facing outside, not facing inwards. Same here, you don't want to place them backwards. You want to make sure that the terminals are facing outwards, or else you're going to have a hell of a time getting your uh, wires connected. Now, while we're looking at the, re the outputs, these are the relay outputs. Each relay has three outputs, NC, CO, and uh, NO. NC is normally connected, Common is com CO is common, NO is normally open. When the relay is off, the common pin is connected to the normally, connect normally closed pin. When the relay is activated, the common pin disconnects from the normally closed pin and connects to the normally open pin. So it is a switch, a high-powered switch. And as you can see, the traces I have for each of those three pins is very thick, so you can have uh, you can control AC with this. For instance, if um, you have an extension cord, uh, AC has three wires: ground, green, white, neutral, and black hot. You cut the you cut the black wire in half. You strip off the insulation. You place one one half of that cut wire in the common pin, and and the other half of that wire to the normally open pin. When that relay is activated, it reconnects the hot wire internally, and so there is power. And adversely, if you want to have power normally connected, you'd have one side of the hot wire connected to common and the other connected to normally closed. So only when the relay is activated is power disconnected. It's, a, it's essentially a two-way switch. So solder those into place. Next we will do our 7805 our socket, and our header. One very important thing that I forgot. Four transistors, four NPN uh, 2N2222 transistors. Now those will be packed in the same bag as the uh, as the remote in some cases. So if you open up your kit and you can't find them, it's because they're in the remote bag. Um, so the uh, those transistors go in the T1, T2, T3, T4 slots. Now you'll notice that the, uh, you might be able to see from here, but the transistors have a flat side and a curved side. The uh, T1 to T4 uh, footprints have a curved side on the back and a flat side. When you're placing the transistors in, make sure that from a bird's eye view that the flat side matches the flat side and that the curved side matches the curved side or else your relay driver will not work. Make sure that, that when you solder them that there's no shorts because they are easy to, relatively easy to short if you don't have a uh, if you're not taking your time. Next we will do the socket 7805 and the header. Almost done. Your 7805 has a black side with writing on it and a flat side that has essentially gray, which, which is ground. The footprint labeled 7805 is right here. Make sure that the side with writing is facing outwards like this. Do not reverse it. The white on the footprint indicates the backing. So place it in like this with the writing facing the front of the board. You can push it down farther when you solder it in. Make sure there are no shorts. Your um, your uh, connector, your sorry, your socket has a notch on the left-hand side. The footprint has a notch on the left-hand side. From a bird's eye view, make sure that the notch is, the notches are facing each other. In this case, from this perspective, that the notch is on the, the left-hand side. The IC can then be placed once the soldering is done with the notch on the IC facing the left hand side as well. It's all about indicators. If you solder, if you place your um, your socket your, or your, your IC in backwards and you power it up, you might fry it. So make sure that the notch on the IC, which is on the left hand side, is facing the 100 microfarad electrolytic capacitor. Very, very important. Now your three pin header. 
take your three pin header, place it right here in this slot, and solder into place. Now for all three of these things, be very, very, very careful not to short. Now what you want to do is after you solder in the header is take the header connector and just put it on uh, the middle left or middle right and we'll get to those in, to that in a second. Solder those into place. Next we'll do our relay. My favorite step, the relays. Very, very easy. Uh, the footprints have uh, three pins on one side, two on the others. The relay only fits in one way. Should pop directly into place. Make sure that they are all flush to the board. Uh, solder all five points for each relay. Give it a healthy amount of solder. Should flow nicely under the board. Next we will do the uh, the uh, receiver and the jumper I was talking about with that piece of wire. This is the last step. You need to take your RF receiver board, place it chip out into the slot on the side. There are seven holes and it should fit right in. Make sure it's flush down on the board and that there's no shorting. Now, once you've done that, we're going to turn the board over and make a one wire modification. Now, the reason for this is the fact that there was a, a fab, a PCB fab issue, and so we just need to uh, apply 5 volts to this receiver because five, the 5 volt line was not completed. You know, it's very easy to do. So, solder that into place, we'll turn the board around. On the receiver, from this perspective, we turn it around. There's seven pins. Let's consider this one pin one. Pin two is the one that we're interested in. It's the second from the bottom. And if you actually look on the board, sorry, I know it's out of focus there, you'll actually see it says five volts on that side. So you want to make sure that you connect, you solder neatly. This little piece of wire that's included, solder a, a, a little wire to the second pin from the bottom, making sure that there's no shorts to any of the other pins. From there, you want to connect the other side to this pin right here on the relay. So when it's all done, it should look like this. Second from the bottom, from this perspective, to this pin. Once you've done that, turn it around and we're all ready to test. Now we're ready. There's one thing to note before we start. <clears throat> there is a little hole in this corner, upper corner of the receiver, that's labeled ANT. <clears throat> and what you can do is, if you're not satisfied with the range you get off this, uh, you can take a uh, a piece of uh, thin non-stranded wire and wrap it around a pencil 18 to 24 times into a pigtail and solder it to that little ant, 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 ant hole, ant for antenna. But it's got pretty good range, especially considering on the uh, transmitter you can uh, take the antenna out which extends range as well. So right now I've powered it up and I've got the I've got the um, the header uh, connector with on the middle and right. Now the middle one is labeled COM for common, and the right is labeled MON for mon mon for momentary. Um, and so if you power it on with that jumper in that setting, and I press uh, the B button, so this is relay one, two, three, four, B, D, A. C. Now you'll notice that I can hold it for as long as I want and it will stay on. Now if I power it down and I take that jumper and I put it on the com middle and the left, com and lat for latch, and I power it back up again. I'll press B and it will latch. D. A. C. Now, you'll also notice that LED goes off every time, and that's basically, it's just basically saying that a, dec a decoded message has been received by the device. So now I'll turn them off. Uh, I'll turn off 1, 3, 2, 4. And there you go. It's a really, uh, well, I'm very, very happy with this board, except for the little uh, wire jumper issue. But the wire jumper issue, I think, is pretty forgivable. It's a good looking board, uh, it's reliable. It's got good range, I'd say easily, no problem with 25 to uh, 40 feet, and you can get that probably close to 100 meters, sorry, not feet, meters, probably close to 100 meters if you get that antenna soldered onto that. There's four mounting holes, they are small, but if you have the right hardware, it shouldn't be a problem to mount these. The traces are very thick, good for power transfer. Uh, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Thanks for watching, everyone.